I know nothing, I have no script, I am a dumbass. Welcome to episode 30 of the Louisiana Dive Bomb Podcast, where we're only one race into the playoffs, and my prediction, my playoff bracket, it's been busted. I don't really know how I feel this morning. I feel really disgusted, actually, but um, nonetheless, it's a good day to be alive. Football's back, so this episode's kind of going to be a little short, because um, the NFL is back, like I mentioned, start up this past Sunday at the same time uh, that the Atlanta Cup race was at, which uh, the Steelers and the Falcons played, so uh, they was in Atlanta. Uh, nonetheless, I was still impressed with the crowd, at least for Sunday's race. Saturday was kind of meh, but I mean, people expected that, so uh, that's they expected the outcome of the Xfinity race to be that way, so I guess that's why not a lot of people showed up. Just Also, the racing really wasn't that good. Sunday's race, though, was actually pretty good. Um, the track once again is starting to age. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a little factor in years to come. Um, but yeah, overall the race on Sunday was phenomenal. I didn't like the finish just because you really can't do much if in a green white checker scenario. And, um, yeah, that's why we got Joey Logano winning. So immediately my playoff bracket is busted. Um, because I had Logano missing the round of 16, or missing the round of 12. He was going to be eliminated in this round. Um, I also had Daniel Suarez missing it, and he finished second. So, um, I don't know anything. I, I really don't know anything. Um, I just have my playoff bracket here, but I'll have to go back and find it. Um, but yeah, the racing overall, the first, second stage was good. The third stage was really good. Going to be a fuel mileage race, where it's like, okay... Are these guys going to be able to make it if we get another yellow? And we had some yellows, some so some guys did make it. Um, but yeah, so my eliminations for the round of sixteen were Joey Logano, Harrison Burton, Austin Cindric, and Daniel Suarez. Three of the four were running uh, inside the top five. Like Austin Cindric dominated the first couple of stages. I think he led over ninety laps. I think over a hundred. Um, he led 92. He led the most laps in that race just because you really couldn't do much. Like, you could run side-by-side side in the packs, but in order to get up front, you would need a massive, massive run. And I think we saw late in the going just how good it was to be on the bottom. Um, you could get a run on the outside heading into turn three. I saw this with Kyle Busch. You could get a run on the outside heading into turn three, but for some reason it doesn't carry through. I think you have to let off somewhat if you're on the outside, which that doesn't make any sense. But for some reason, if you just stick it on the bottom, they would have to get a massive, massive run. Like they could be uh, voice crack. They could be like halfway alongside your car, but for some reason, that bottom you just get a good run off the corner and it just propels you down the front stretch. Um, so yeah, three of the four drivers that I picked to get eliminated finished inside the top ten. Um, Harrison Burton was having a solid run until he got caught up in that. Uh, last crash, and that really kind of messed up his day. Uh, where did he finish, actually? I'm trying to look for that. Do I not see him there? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a bad finish. He was actually having a solid run. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about, uh, Denny Hamlin. What the hell was he thinking? I understand it's classified as a super speedway now, but it, the the mindset going into it, okay, I'm just going to run in the back, wait for the wreck to happen, da 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 I mean, we had some wrecks, but nothing major. Like, nothing major. And the major one we had, he was caught up in it. How the hell is that your game plan? Like, the playoffs just started. Sitting in the back for the first stage and second stage, okay, I understand. Maybe the car wasn't that fast, but to purposely stay in the back and do nothing, and then just to get caught up in a wreck on the last lap, like, that's just idiotic. That's really dumb. It's really, really dumb. And the only thing that I can think of to why he actually did it is because the the car that he had was just dog shit. It was dog shit. Couldn't move up front. I don't know if there's a time where he cracked the top 30 yesterday. And the only time he did, he was caught up in the wreck. He finished 24th, but he didn't get any stage points. And I got to look at this uh, playoff graphic. I got to look at where he's at. He's sitting plus two to the cut line right now after that performance. Yeah. You better hope your your car doesn't suck at the Glen in Bristol. Otherwise, you're fucked, buddy. 
holy hell, I don't know how he does it. Like, every time in the playoffs, something goes wrong to where he just doesn't make the championship four or he doesn't win the championship. I don't know how that happens, but, yeah, you got a lot of explaining to do, my guy. Um, I don't know if that action's detrimental is out yet, but I want to hear what his game plan was. If that was an actual strategy call or if his car was just that shit where he couldn't get up front. Um, and then the Kyle Larson wreck. So the Kyle Larson wreck was really the biggest wreck of the day because it had two playoff drivers in it. Now I know the last wreck had a bunch of playoff guys in it, like more than two. Um, but this one was big because Kyle Larson, he barely missed out on the regular season championship and he got absolutely blindsided by it. So he lost his, he lost control of his car going into turn two. It was just like a little wiggle. He went to correct it and he overcorrected just smack the outside wall and they were lucky they were spaced out otherwise that could have been a really bad wreck um and then for some reason chase briscoe just arca braked right into it i mean tore up, tore up the five car absolutely tore it up chase briscoe's car was tore up as well which he was already going to be in the pickle but i thought he would at least get through atlanta unscathed but to no avail he was running top 10 when that happened so his day was finished early. He's 21 points now below the cutoff. Kyle Larson, fortunately for his wins and stage wins throughout the year, he's plus 15 to the cut line, but he he cannot afford a mistake. At Watkins Glen, which he should be fine at. Bristol might be a little eh with the tires. Gotta see how that race turns out because of how the spring race went um, with the tire situation for everyone. But, um, yeah, so Kyle Larson going to be in a pickle. Briscoe's going to need to win. He's going to need a win. He's last, minus 21. I understand some issues can happen for some guys at the Glen, but, um, yeah, I, I just don't see that happening. But then again, I didn't see Joey Legato making it past the round of 16. But, well, like I said, I know nothing. I don't have a script. I'm just a dumbass. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. I got to – allergies are killing me. I don't know why, but for some reason – like the temperatures are cool, but for some reason my nose just keeps running. I don't know if that's just an allergy thing or if it's just me, but just give me a minute. Yeah, uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, could just be a me problem. But yeah, Joey Logano won. Daniel Suarez finished second. Thought we were going to have a three wide photo finish uh, with a couple laps to go, but then the cautions have just kept coming out. Um,. So we got Ryan Blaney finished third as well, despite having a tore up race car. He had a really tore up race. He was caught up in one of the wrecks on the back stretch, had a bunch of tape on the side of the car, but he uh, he did good. He finished third. He was able to uh, make up enough points to where he's now the highest playoff driver without a win. So Joey Logano, we already said he's he's won. He's moved on. Ryan Blaney, he's right up there, plus 45 to the cut line. Christopher Bell, another playoff driver, he finished fourth. He's plus 40 to the cut line. These are guys that had a good performance. Alex Bowman finished fifth, phenomenal, needed that. Plus 27 to the cut line now, just phenomenal stuff. Tyler Reddick, he was able to just stay out of trouble, plus 33 to the cut line. He finished sixth, very good finish there. Kyle Busch, just going at it for wins. Uh, the highest driver... <clears throat> the highest cup driver without uh, being in the playoffs finished seventh. And I thought he was again, going to have a shot up there, but he didn't, but he's stringing together some good finishes for that RCR group. Chase Elliott finished eighth. Where's he at? Plus 24, not too shabby. William Byron finished P nine plus 33. Also not too shabby. The guy that I think that had the best performance. <clears throat> I need a water. The guy that I think that had the best performance out of the weekend, Austin Sindrick. He led the most laps. He got stage points. He got a stage win. And we're coming up on the Glen, which could be a sneaky track for him to lock himself in at because he is good on road courses. Plus 27 to the cut line. And he entered, um, I think he entered like just above or might have been just below. It was either minus one or plus one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I really need to get a drink, but trying to power through this. So, Cedric, in my opinion, had the best performance. Uh, and then we're coming up on the Glen in Bristol. Bristol, not going to be too much of a factor, in my opinion. But the Glen, very well could have a good run there to where he could propel himself into the round of 12. Um, and then some 
other notables here. Daniel Hamrick finished 11th. I pondered putting him in for a top 10. Glad I didn't. I would have been heartbroken. Justin Haley finished 12th. That's a solid finish for him. Ross Chastain was up front, and then he got shuffled back in like the last couple of laps, and it really fucked him over. Uh, so he finished 13th. Stenhouse finished 14th. Corey LaJoy, the burger flipper, finished 15th. Hosevar, 16th. Ty Gibbs, another playoff driver, 17th. He is plus one to the cut line. He was also up front, but got shuffled out in the end. And, you know, I think he was actually caught up in that wreck. He might have been caught up in that wreck. Um, Brakizlowski, he did not have a stellar performance. He was kind of like mid-pack. He's minus one to the cut line now. Um, I'm trying to find another notable playoff driver. Well, we mentioned Denny Hamlin, how fucking stupid his strategy was. I mean, I still can't believe that. Um, he finished 24th and he is now only plus two to the cut line. Like that's just, that's just unfathomable. Um, some other, I'm trying to look for another playoff driver, but I, uh, well, Harrison Burton, he was, he was actually inside the top 10 for a good bit of the first half of the race, but the second half, I really kind of lost count because football was on. And I was looking at my bets. I won money in football. I won money in NASCAR on Saturday, but not on Sunday. He finished 31st and he is now minus 16 to the cut line. Not sure how the car is going to be at Watkins Glen in Bristol, but he's really in a bad spot right now. Uh, Martin Truex Jr., he how did he, uh, he had a suspension issue. Like He was caught up in a rag, but, um, yeah, not good for the 19 car. He's minus 19 to the cut line, ironically, after finishing 35th. Kyle Larson, we mentioned that. He was running literally third, I think, when that wreck happened. Um, despite that. He's plus 15 to the cut line, but he can't really afford another issue. Chase Briscoe finished dead last. He's minus 21 to the cut line. He's going to need a win to get in, uh, either at the Glen, which he's a very sneakily good road courser. Uh, road courser. Road course racer. Got to remember back in 2021 where he should have won the Indy Road Course, but uh, kind of fumbled that away. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, Juan Pablo Montoya is coming back to the Glen for the cup series. He's going to be running the 2311 entry. Um, so that'll be fun to keep an eye on. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Xfinity race real quick. I mean, I kind of expected it to go the way that it did. Um, I was a little concerned at first when Austin Hill wasn't leading, um, mostly because I put money on Austin Hill to win. And lo and behold, I was able to get that done. But, uh, yeah, the Xfinity race, for some reason, at Atlanta, they just don't race that pack, and it's, it's most likely the car, because uh, they have the Super Speedway package in, but for some reason, they can't get alongside, like, cars could just go up willingly and make the move uh, to get to the lead, like, we saw Allgaier do it, we saw Austin Hill do that, um, obviously, the biggest part of the race was right at the very end, where Cole Custer, Justin Allgaier made contact with each other, and the contact cut the sevens right front, created this massive wreck with Cole Custer, Ryan Sieg, Riley Herbst, uh, Taylor Gray was in it, and Jesse Love was in it as well. His rear bumper was, or no, he was carrying Riley Herbst's rear bumper on his roof. Uh, yeah, when I saw that, I thought, no way did someone just rear end someone to the point where their bumper came off. But no, it was just Riley Herbst's bumper flew off and it just magically landed on the uh, roof of the two car after that uh austin hill he was able to get the lead he was leading with all those laps left and then it gets to a point where it's just austin hill chandler smith Corey heim and parker kligerman and then throughout that finish i'm like okay i'm thinking this 48 car is in a good spot because something's going to happen to the front two or three and he's going to be in a really good spot and he was he was in a good spot because coming out of you know, <clears throat> let me not get too ahead of myself coming into turn three Smith gives a bump to Austin Hill, gets him up the racetrack. Chandler Smith has a run to the inside. It's the only time that someone's going to get alongside the 21 car because other than running the outside lane, you really can't go anywhere. So if there's an opportunity, and I mean, put this into play, they're coming to the white flag. They're coming to the last lap. If you get a run to the inside, you got to take it. So Chandler Smith took it. Corey Heim, he decided to go with Austin Hill to put himself in a better chance to win the race. 
that really makes no sense. And in my opinion, that should be a bigger deal with the Toyota group than what happened with Parker Retzlaff at Daytona in the cup race. Because Corey Heim willingly chose to not help the Toyota teammate out. And what and he wants to talk about how much of a idiotic move. I don't think he said it was idiotic, but he basically called the move idiotic from Chandler Smith to go on the inside when the run was on the outside. Well, hey, Heim, how did that work for you, buddy? You went to the outside and you got put in the fucking wall. How well did that go for you? Huh? And Chandler Smith finished ahead of you. So who's the real dumbass here? Like, I would have just kept my mouth shut at that point. I didn't know he was going to triple down on what he did. That was just really dumb. I mean, that's why he's probably going to be in the trucks for another season. And it's a shame because he's a good talent. But you gotta, you got to think about the bigger picture. You're helping a Chevrolet. I understand you're going to go and try to win the race for yourself. But really, to, to say what you said after it, it just makes you look more like a dumbass. I don't know who's the bigger dumbass after this weekend. Denny Hamlin or Corey Heim? Like, it... I, I, it really makes no sense to me because you, it, two cars are better than one, regardless if you're on the inside or the outside. You're going to give that Toyota another shot to win, like a better shot to win. What are we thinking? What are we doing? I, I just don't understand because Austin Hill just keeps winning because these guys don't know what the fuck to do on the last lap to try and get around him. And because of that, I won 80 bucks on the weekend. So suck it. Suck it. I really don't care. I don't give a fuck anymore because if you're just going to be that stupid to where you don't want to help a manufacturer teammate win, then that's on you. Maybe this isn't the sport for you because at the end of the day, over the last few years, the super speedway races have always been, you know, help your, help your manufacturer teammate. We've seen it at Daytona. We've seen it at Talladega with these single car teams. They work with the manufacturer that they're running, whether it's a Toyota, a Ford or a Chevy, they all work with each other. To not go for the, to not help your Toyota teammate for a win and instead of go for yourself, it got you nowhere. You went to the outside, you got in the fucking wall. Oh well, and the 48 of Parker Kligerman was in a great spot from that, but he had no help. And at that point, three and four, all bets are off. You don't have any other laps. So Almendinger had the fresher tires, went to the outside, couldn't get the move done. Um, so Austin Hill ended up getting the win. Parker Kligerman got second again. His time is coming. His time is coming for that win for the Xfinity Series. Um, could be at the Glen. Parker Kligerman, good on the road courses. Got a win in the Truck Series a couple years back in mid-Ohio. Got to keep in mind there. And Almondinger got third. Chandler Smith, who got fucked out of the whole ordeal to begin with, finished fourth. And Corey Heim finished fifth. So Heim looks like a dumbass after what he said, in my opinion. That's just you. That just can't happen. That cannot happen. I still just don't understand the thought process. Like, it's not like, okay, it was just sudden and he had to make a decision. No, he had plenty of time. He was behind the 81. He saw the 21 go up. And what did he do? He went up with him, thought about himself. And, you know, here's the thing. At least with Parker Retzlaff, he made himself look respectable. He didn't clown the decision from Kyle Busch. Oh, well, why did he choose the inside? Should have chose the outside. I would have went with him there. He didn't do that. He just, he went with, I just went for the decision to support the people that support me. Basically is what he said. He sounded respectable. He didn't clown anybody. He just, he just said it. He just took the higher road. He didn't, you know, clown Chevrolet or Kyle Busch. And not to mention, they're not even in the manufacturer meeting because uh, it's it's with the 62 team, Beard, Beard Motorsports. They're not in the team with all the the team meeting with all the Chevrolet teams to where, hey, we got to do this to win the race, you know? Now, the 26 car, it's a Sam Hunt racing car. Now, time after time, they'll get a Toyota driver like a, like a Joe Gibbs racing driver. And the thing is, you don't want to clown the Toyota drivers that you're racing with because there is no other pipeline for Toyota. It's Joe Gibbs racing all the way. That's it. Tricon's kind of become that Toyota team now to where they can, you know, facilitate drivers into the series above. But you don't want to clown that. You don't want to clown those drivers and clown the decisions that they're making because that's an easy way to get yourself kicked out of the TRD group. Seriously. I mean, you're in a good spot. Don't fuck it up. Like, don't fuck it up. You're, you're really fucking up right now. 
with the comments you said afterwards because you you didn't look any better because you tried to go for the win and you finished behind the guy that you didn't want to help win. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of fucking up here, bud. Don't do that. Just keep your mouth shut and run your race. <sighs> really got me pissed off. That's the only thing I want to talk about from the Xfinity race because other than that, it was kind of meh. The wreck was also meh. But lo and behold, Austin Hill won. Doesn't matter if he led the most laps or not. He led two laps in the spring, and it was the last two. He led 12 laps, and it was the last 12. Um, So props to Austin Hill. He got another win because the guys behind him didn't want to work with each other. They wanted to go for themselves, and that's why other drivers are in a series lower than the Xfinity series. Um, yeah, so that's going to be that. Uh, we got the Watkins Glen race coming up. I think both Xfinity, yes, Xfinity and Cup go there. Xfinity Saturday at three. The Cup is Sunday at three as well. Um, that should be fun because I can't think of a time where Watkins Glen wasn't run in the summer. Uh, it's always been a summer race, whether it's late August, middle August, early August. Um, so this should be interesting because temperatures are probably going to be cooler, if I had to guess. Uh, I'll look at the weather real quick, but. Um, usually it's always hot and slick, so there might be some more, uh, more grip in the track. Let's look at Sunday. Sunday's still going to be 80. Friday's going to, uh, well, that's Saturday. Saturday's 80. Sunday is 79. Partly cloudy. So there's going to be more grip in the racetrack. Um, one thing to note, they changed the bus stop heading into, uh, uh, heading into the long right-hander, the, the carousel. They changed the rumble strips so i don't know why they did it it wasn't broke to begin with but they changed something with the rumble strips where it didn't make sense so that's something to keep an eye on i can't really remember what it was all i know is that it was a stupid decision what they did they basically took out the curbing and they put like these uh i would uh, i want to say sausage curbs but they're kind of like turtles where it just it hurts your car basically if you're going over it so um that's one thing i don't agree with um, I thought the curbing was fine to begin with. It's all about being on the edge of the racing surface. So I think that kind of takes away from it where these guys have to stay on the racing surface. The curbing is like as far out of bounds as you can go without, you know, ruining your race. So, uh, like I said, we'll have to see, uh, in practice and qualifying. And like I mentioned, Juan Pablo Montoya is going to be back in the cup race. His first cup race since I think 2014. 2015 i think his last cup race i can look this up his last cup race was at indianapolis for the 12 car let me look at one pablo montoya very underappreciated driver all right well that just i tried searching his name on racing reference and apparently that didn't do anything um but yeah, very underappreciated driver in my opinion. I guess I was just too young to um, take into account uh, the impact that Juan Pablo had on the sport. But he is uh, he's up there in age. He uh, He's going to be 48. I think he's 48 years old. 47 or 48. So he's still got some racing in him. Uh yeah, he ran two races in 2014. His last was at Indianapolis. Finished 18th at Michigan. Finished 23rd at Indianapolis after starting 8th. That was the 12 car for Penske. Um, yeah, so that should be fun. He's going to be racing the 50 car for 23-11. Um, I'm really excited. I, I, I want to see if Juan Pablo still got it. So I'm going to sprinkle a little sum on that 50 car just because why not. And it's a road course. He's... Uh, he's won there before, but then again, that was a long time ago. I think it was 2010. Different car, different era, different drivers. So, uh, should be interesting how that goes. Uh, and like I mentioned, football is back, so I'm going to be doing a lot more of football watching rather than race watching. I'm still going to be watching the race. I'm just going to invest more time into football because that's where the money is. I won 500 bucks over the weekend. Actually, no, I won 600 bucks over the weekend on football. I had a Three hundred dollar bet on a parlay. I parlayed uh, four teams together, and I did the same, just a little cheaper at the casino. So I had Bills, Texans, 
Dolphins and Bears to win. Uh, made about six hundred bucks, like six hundred four or something on the weekend from football. I only made eighty on NASCAR. I didn't have that many bets to begin with because it was Atlanta. Uh, I only had Byron to win, Kyle Busch to win. They were up front at the very end. I thought, okay, well, maybe I'm in a good spot. Nope, he got shuffled around and didn't win that. Um, so make sure you check out underslappingmedia.com. That's why I didn't have a cup article because I was just, uh, eh, yeah, I really didn't have a good feel for any of the drivers. Um, I did have a good feel for Kligerman top five, which I did. I, I won that. I don't know why I left that out. I won 80 bucks from Austin Hill winning, but I also won about 56 from Parker Kligerman top five and Props to him. He put himself in the right place at the right time. I did have five on him to win as well. Would have been another 75 if he won, but, you know, we move on. Um, and this is episode 30, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, these videos are, well, these episodes are starting to come out on YouTube now. I was able to get to the nitty-gritty into how I can get it uploaded to YouTube, but they are still on Spotify, just multi-platform now. Uh, that's about it. So I'll see you guys after the Glen.